Hello True Believer, today we're going to go through Tinkercad tutorial number 2, part 3. So we're going to look at um, now how to move and rotate the objects and scale them and not just um, how to move around on the work plane. So which in the previous lesson we learned about how we can right click to rotate the camera around, how we can hold shift and right click to move and pan around, and also how to use the scroll um, wheel up and down so that we can zoom in and out. Okay, so let's begin. Um, so we've done the work plane, so the first step is we're going to place a box onto the screen and as we place that it might not be exactly right and that's fine so we've got all these different little grid lines down the bottom we can move around by nudging the box so if we use the arrow keys on your uh, keyboard and I've moved left and right basically it will move the object around if I hold down control and up and down it moves it along the z-axis so if I use the up arrow just by itself it goes up and down the y and the down key if I use the left and right, moves the box around that way. So then we can also use the undo button. So if you press Control and Z, or the button up here, the undo, it literally will undo all the different things that you've done. So if we just place that box back on, and we nudge it into the position that we want it to be. And that's the benefit of it all being on a work plane because you're only dealing with two dimensions when you're dealing with those up and down. The next step is, if we go back to our little 3D modeler's salute, is we can rotate the object. So we can rotate around the z-axis, which shifts everything around the y, the y and the z, x move around it. We can rotate around the y-axis, which moves everything that way around. So if you physically have your hand, you can see your fingers the Z, if I move the rotate around the Y, the, the, th the Z thumb and the X finger will move relative to it. Okay, so that's what rotation sort of does, and also around the X. So if we move our X finger around, the Y and the Z rotate around it. Okay, so that's what rotation is. Now in uh, Tinkercad, if we just change that view, so it's the same, and we zoom in. Um, what you'll notice on the actual object here is there's these little handles. So these handles here are what allow it to rotate. So if I want to rotate, um, for example, this one, which will rotate around the y-axis, and I click, it rotates it around. Okay, just control Z. If I rotate around this one, that's what happens, it moves that way. And then if I rotate around this one, moves around this axis or the Z axis. Okay, so that's what those different little handles are on that sort of box. Um, what you should have noticed then when we were rotating is this is a little protractor. So if I highlight this, um, the little circle disc with a few little lines come out. Now if I click and move inside the circle, it will move 22.5 degrees each time. Okay, that's just allowing for some rapid movement. Um, if you want to be more accurate, you basically move, while you're holding down, move the mouse outside, and then you can move very clearly exactly the, the degrees that you want to measure. Or, alternatively, if you want to be very specific with how many degrees you want to measure, um, you can type in either negative or positive um, measurements. So if I type in 45, for example, that will rotate at 45 degrees from where I originally was. Um, you can also type in negative um, distance as well, and it will rotate the other way around, which you just saw in the protractor when it went red. The last one, which I don't quite use that often, but it is possible, is if you hold down the shift key while rotating, it will move it around in 45 degree blocks. Okay, so those are the different ways that you can sort of rotate around inside that axis. So we've we've matched that to the, the um, 45 degrees that it needed to do which is more than possible. So the next one, if we do undo that and center it again, is they want you to rotate around the X and Y. Now, when you do this, it actually moves it off the work plane. So um, if we rotate this, what you should notice now is there's this gap inside here and the, the um, object is rotated around the work plane. Okay, so as you rotate around these, just be careful of it because sometimes you might be going inside of an object. So just be aware and cautious of that. Right, the next one is then we're going to go scales, control Z to bring it back. And we're going to look at the different scaling functions. So if we come back here and click on the object, we've seen the handles, which are these three around the edge, which rotate them. 
inside the box, you would have maybe have seen some other uh, black dots. So there's actually um, three of them. Uh, sorry, four black dots and four white dots. Sorry, five white dots. Now, this up arrow here also moves to the translation up and downs, which is what we've sort of done before. So if we focus just on scaling the object, um, the black handles will only move in one dimension. So if we click and drag and move that around, or alternatively, if we've got a specific measurement, we can click and type in exactly the measurement that it needs to sort of go. So those are sort of the options that you can do. So you can scale it. You can also come up here in the properties and change the scale that way as well. So you can come in here. If you know exactly the measurements of the box, you can type it in that way. Um, there are also white handles. So these white handles handle two dimensions. So both in the X and Y. So if you click and drag that, it'll move it around. And then the last dimension that you can sort of change around is the Z axis, which is the top here. So if you click and drag that, it will move it around, which is again, another white handle. Okay. So that's basically, you can either have a black or a white handle to change the scale. So as we saw before, if we want to change this, we can just click and drag, nudge it to make sure it fits in exactly where we want it to be. And then we can click and drag that up. based off the little white handle. And then if I click on that white handle, that will scale that up. It's not quite right, is it? So we click that. So you usually use the white handles to get it roughly where it needs and the blacks help you to be a bit more specific if that's what you're looking to do. Um, now we'll go back to the white handles and drag that back and then the white handle at the top to sort of bring that down. So again, pulling the black handles, which will shift that around. And that basically does that. Now, the other thing that you can sort of do is um, proportional scaling. So if you grab any of these handles and you hold down shift, what happens is it will scale it all in proportion for all three axes. Now this is useful if you've made a particular shape exactly the way that you want it and you want it at all scale, you just hold down the shift and it will keep it all in proportion and scale it up and down to the, the size that you want it. So usually what I do, so I try and lock in a corner, which in this case I've locked that corner and then try and do the other side and then scale that up. Okay, so if I hold down sh shift, that scales it that way. Alternatively, if I hold shift and scale in the center, what happens is it scales it relative to the very center as well. Okay. Um, so if we go across here, and we scale that up here. And then we've scaled it all around the center of the object. So if you've got that all perfectly lined up and you shift, you see how that scales it relative to the corner on the opposite side. If I hold down shift and alt at the same time while clicking on that, it now scales it to the center, which is what this is sort of talking about. Okay, which is basically the same as if you click on this top here. But if you notice, it's now shift, um, it's not just centering it from the base. So if I just press shift, and click, drag that down. It will keep the work plane in centered. But if I want to um, get it to hover exactly in the three dimensional space where the center is, I hold down Alt and then that will move that all around the whole center of where it currently is. And that's the same if you click on these sides. Okay, so that's basically what the Alt does. So if you grab any of the handles and hold down shift and alt and pull, it will basically keep it all proportionalized. So if I hold down alt, it's kept that rectangular prism, which isn't quite the shape that they're trying to put us in, which I don't know why, but let's get that all lined up. Um, and then yeah, basically that gets placed there. 
that gets placed at the top. And if again, if we hold down the shift and alt as we move this around, that fixes all those issues. All right, the last one that we're gonna do is if we um, wanna actually scale and make a perpendicular, uh, like a parallelogram. So if we basically line that up down here, and we'll place our object here on the end. Now, if we rotate this, what is it, 22 degrees? And then if we change the scale, that way, and then that way, we've made a proper um, parallelogram. Now, a common mistake happened when I was trying to learn how to do this. Make sure you put the cube in that exact position that I've done there, and then drag and rotate it around this axis this way. Okay, um, I had a few troubles the first time around trying to do that, I'll be honest with you. Okay, so make sure you line it all up like that, and off you go. So again, just so that you can see how that was done, click there, rotate it 22 degrees. And we click on the black dot, drag that out, and then click on that black dot, and drag that out that way. Okay, so that's basically how you rotate it. Now, if you ever want to delete an object, you just literally click on it and press the delete button. Or alternatively, you can click on it and press the little trash can at the top. Okay, but the delete button makes you a lot easier. And then we're done. Okay, so if you ever need a refresher, um, rotate and repeat this awesome lesson and basically get used to how to place an object in. So if we place the roof in there like that, you can rotate. The, the three skills that you should be able to do is translating around on the X and Y. If you want to move it along the Z axis, you can press the top little arrow at the top there. You can then rotate it, so that's the second option. So you can either rotate, uh, usually I use the angles at the top, so that's more specific, or you can use the inside ones by 22. And then the last one is on all shapes, so there's the different handles. So there's the black handles for one dimension, um, the white handles for two dimensions, the top handle to change it in the Z axis, and if you hold down shift, it moves all of them. If you hold down alt, it keeps it all proportional around the center. Awesome, thank you very much, and see you in the next lesson.